Page 98, the Quezon Song. The very famous melody here in the United States. Let's look this over. There's nothing new. They do seem to have a new note. Look at the bottom of page 99. You see there that there's an A in the bass clef. The bottom space is an A. To me, I don't know what notes you know or don't know, so I'm assuming you know them all on here. You know all of the notes within the bass clef and the treble clef within the staff. You may not know the notes in the ledger lines yet, but you know the notes within the staff itself. If you don't, you really need to learn them as soon as you can. So let's look it over. Two pages long, treble and bass clef, no sharps or flats in the key signature. We're in the key of C major. Make sure you can do the C major scale. It's the same lecture on every video. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Four, four time signature. We got quarter notes, half notes, dotted rhythms, whole notes. We can handle that. There's a few accidentals here and there, but we can handle those too, I'm sure. Take it one hand at a time. Make sure we understand what each hand is doing. The right hand, you start out with fifth finger on G here. Put your hand in this position. And it's quarter notes. Isn't this fun? Third measure. One, two, three, four. One, two. And then they went fourth finger. We, we changed hand positions. It's good exercise to be changing hand positions, but I don't like changing hand positions when I don't have to. So if I'm going to need fourth finger at the end of the first line, why not just use fourth finger at the beginning? Why am I changing hand positions? So in my opinion, you could start this with fourth finger at the beginning. Just be in this position to begin with. You don't have to change positions. You may have to change down a position later on, but you got to do that anyway. So I suggest you start with fourth finger at the beginning. However, let's go on. It's, it's the last measure of the first line. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to connect everything as best I can. And third measure in the second line, a dotted rhythm. One and two and. I hope you understand dotted rhythms by now because they're not difficult. If not, please go back to the lesson where they introduced them and where I explained them in detail and try and understand them. Then in the second line, now they want you to come down here. There's no right or wrong. I mean, the fingering in the book works, but I'm going to suggest this fingering. The last measure of the second line, you're here. Just stay there. And then the fifth finger. And then at the end of that line, you have a rest. You can lift up and move during the rest. That's fine. I like to feel my way around the keyboard. I want to be able to move without looking if I can. And if you want, during the rest, you can just leave the thumb where it is and just move the hand up so your fourth finger's on G and you're ready to go. And then you can move the thumb. See, I'm kind of feeling my way around here. Comes in handy sometimes. Or you just simply lift up and move up. There's a rest. You can do that if you want. And in the fourth line, I suggest, again, stay where you are. Just second finger there instead of third. And then at the last line on page 98, second measure, scrunch up and use fifth finger. There. Last measure on page 98. You have a rest. They want you to come up here into this position because we need to be here going on. So you finished here. I'm going to suggest that we just spread out a little bit and just use second finger instead of thumb here. The fingering in the book is fine, but these fingerings I'm showing you a little more advanced. They're going to help out later on, so let's try them out. Just second finger and fifth. So they want thumb and fourth finger because in the second line on page 99 you have a D coming up. You're going to need to be there. But we don't need to be there yet. So I'm going to go five and then four. Remember we can use repeated notes to change hand positions. That's all I'm doing. So at the top of page 99 I'm doing a five and then a four. And now I'm in position that I need to be in. So again from the last measure on page 98, you're to hear, then during the round, I'm just going to reach up, and then going on, four, and then four. Uh, 
and you're staying in this position until the third line down on page 99. You're ending here, then just lift up and come down. And that's fine. We can do that. Yeah, have a rest. You got time to just come down. In the left hand, you're starting with G sum here, G's, and then a G7 chord. And then second line, they want second finger on the C. Well, you got rest, you got time to just come on down. Two, three, four, two, three, four, that's fine. And third line, you gotta come back up here for the G7 chord. You do that some more. Okay, page 99. Start with a C chord that's tied, and then you get the F chord, C chord, second line, you have an F sharp in there. And both of those Fs in that measure are sharp. Remember the rule for accidentals, it's good from that point on for the rest of the measure. But only that measure and only that staff. So both of those Fs in that measure, this is the first measure, the second line, both of those are sharp. But then for the half note, they have to give it a sharp because the sharp from before isn't good anymore. So they're all sharp. And then going on, the G7 chord, that F is not sharp in the third measure because the sharp from before is only good for that measure. So we're back to the G7 chord. Third line, you're starting with a C chord and then they want you to come up here. If you got big hands, that doesn't work. You're welcome to just straight up and use three and two. Here, I'm saving thumb for the F. And again, both of those G's in that measure are sharp in the F chord. Okay. At the bottom, the last line, the last two measures. You're here. And that C, that last note has an AV8 under it. So you go down an octave. Okay. Put the hands together. Well, the f first three measures of this, or first three, three and a half measures, if you would, is introduction. I mean, it's pretty rest, rest. You're just kind of setting the mood for the piece and the speed and all. And then at the end of the first line, the quarter notes, It's that's the song. It's a pickup song. And hold this down for one beat. To coordinate the hands and the rhythm, you go through and work it out. Then go back through the tough spots and get rid of the hesitations. Go as slow as you got to go, but a steady beat throughout. Then we can try the dyna or the articulation. I'm hinging at the wrist for the staccatos. They're short. And then lift up for the phrases. And this is staccato in the left hand. Second line, lift up. It's like taking a breath. So you got staccatos and phrasing, you can do all that. Dynamics, they go to the melody, the introduction, there is no melody, so it's both hands loud. Whatever you think loud is, forte. And then the song starts at the end of the line and you come down to sort of loud and that's the melody. The left hand needs to go down to soft. And you're staying basically at the moderately loud level until the bottom of the page, the last two notes, you go back up to loud. And the right hand. Keep the left hand in the background and you're basically finishing it off loud. Well, if you get to know it, feel it, you can adjust these dynamics a little bit. That, those, that's the area where you're at, but you're in, you know, you can adjust it a little. So I'm not going to play page 89 at most of that at medium loud. I'm going to get a little louder and softer as I feel it. And I'm not going to play page 99 loud all the way through. I'm going to get a little louder and softer, but it'll be on the loud side. As far as the Speed goes, if you're going to sing it, how fast would you go? I 
mean, the steady march beat, that, that can be misleading. I mean, it is common that you could march to this, left, right, left, right, but you would feel it in two. You would be marching to the half notes. So it's left, right, left, right, left. That's how, so quarter notes would move pretty good. It doesn't have to go that fast. So you, you decide, I mean, you can find recordings of this, I'm sure, but listen to several because they'll do it different at different speeds and different ways. And it's, it's just interesting to see all the, or to hear all the different ways it's done. Let's play it together slowly and double check our notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics, I'm going to play both hands about the same. I'll give us four counts. We're checking notes and rhythms here. I will do the staccatos and stuff, but we're not performing it, we're just checking notes and rhythms. One, two, ready, go. Rest. Rest. Two, three, four. 